Soldiers patrol the streets of Parma. Army commanders say the military is back in control of the town nearly two weeks after it was seized by armed groups. We cleared the last area this morning and it's completely safe. In the next few hours, if we need to bring in any planes with food for the population, that can be done with no problem. It is secure. There's not much left of Parma. Buildings including the town's hospital, the state prosecutor's office, banks and shops are badly damaged. And soldiers have the grim task of covering up dead bodies lying on the street. The increasing boldness of the terrorist activities that we've seen in Mozambique is very concerning indeed. I think the, 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 the violence they have perpetrated on civilians uh, in Mozambique is truly atrocious and it has been condemned and needs to be condemned again and again. The governor of Cabo Delgado admitted the situation is bleak but said he's optimistic things can improve. We are here because our security and defence forces defended the country and everything that has been said and the government position is that the job has been done. We defeated the enemy. Around 75,000 people used to live in Parma. Most escaped the attack. Around 2,000 displaced people made it to the city of Pemba. But the influx is putting pressure on local services and families. Peter Nguila took in seven relatives and is now struggling to make ends meet. It's a big sacrifice. I used to buy one sack of rice, which was enough for all of us. But now I have to buy two or three sacks because we have so many people to feed. Food is expensive, much more expensive with all these refugees. The UN says more than 20,000 people stayed in Parma despite the attack. It's hoped those who left will be able to return home soon. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera.